Hi, I'm Marissa. Thank you very much for choosing my presentation today. In this presentation, I'm going to introduce how to instruct EFL listening diagnostically based on theories and evidence with many practical examples. The biggest feature of this instruction method is that learners' weak points in listening are visualized. Also, this instruction method makes le lecturers possible to point out precisely where and why learners' comprehension broke down and how to fix it. As the beginning, I should start to make a clear difference between testing and teaching on listening in English. Many instructors, including me, do not often realize a difference between testing and teaching when teaching listening in English. The most common way that we do is that we tell our students to listen to English and answer the questions. Maybe the audio files are repeated a couple of times depend on the level of learners. Then, Normally, the answers are given possibly with the audio script, the translation in Japanese language, and the word list as well. The learners are often told to listen to the audio file repeatedly until they fully understand it in case they have any mistakes or if there is any context that they don't understand. However, this procedure it's just a testing, but not teaching itself, since the explanation about where and why comprehension broke down and how to overcome the problems is not given at all. The students are totally left alone to work it out what was wrong and how to overcome the problems. In order to teach listening, we, the teachers, should be capable of instructing precisely where and why comprehension broke down and how to overcome the problems. So in that meaning, please realize that testing and teaching are two different things. By the end of this presentation, you will be able to instruct where and why learners' comprehension broke down precisely and how to instruct overcome the problem. The first step. Now, in order to find out precisely where learners' comprehension broke down, we need to collect the data. So the first step is to tell your students to do a dictation after answering the questions. Now, when it comes to a dictation, we should know that dictation is no longer popular in Japan. As many students don't know what it is, you may have to explain what dictation is and how to do it. Also, it's important to provide a proper dictation sheet depending on the proficient level. For example, this is a practical example of a dictation sheet for beginners. Here, listeners need to listen and dictate the content words which are critical to answer the questions. And for intermediate, as you can see, words in blue are added. And for advanced learners, as you can see, including function words, every single word is required to be dictated. Through this task, we can precisely pinpoint where and why comprehension broke down if learners get wrong answers. Now let's move on to the second step. The purpose of the second step is to find out precisely 
where and why Lana's comprehension broke down. As a concrete procedure, after the dictation, provide both answers and an audio script. Then ask the learners to highlight with a marker only content words that they couldn't catch. Through this procedure, learners can become to know their weak points in listening visually. Now, when it comes to content words, words are divided into two categories. Content words and function words. Nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and demonstrative pronouns are categorized as content words. They convey relevant information unlike function words, such as prepositions, conjunctions, and determiners. So function words are not generally stressed in listening. Okay, let me go back to the main three. After asking learners to highlight content words they couldn't catch, then ask also whether there is any mistakes or any questions which they couldn't answer. As you can see, the first question is, what is the topic of the conversation? And the answer is C, buying an appliance. If one of your students got the wrong answer here, ask them whether the learners knew the definition of this word, appliance. That's the first diagnosis. If not, this is where comprehension broke down and the cause is a deficiency of vocabulary. In case the learners knew the definition of this word, appliance, yet they got the wrong answer, ask the learners, ask the learners whether they can recognize these content words such as TV, old, and buy by reading. That's a second diagnosis. If not, this is where comprehension broke down and the cause is a deficiency of vocabulary. If the learners can recognize these content words by reading, yet they got the wrong answers, this is still where comprehension broke down and a cause lies in an imbalance between an auditory and visual information processing abilities. In other words, the learners can comprehend the information only when it's presented visually, but they can't do so auditorily, I mean, just by listening. Whether the information is presented visually or auditorily, words means the same. Yet when there is an imbalance between an auditory and visual information processing abilities, this phenomenon occurs. The learners can recognize words by reading, but not by listening. Here is some evidence. A Japanese researcher, Ikeda, reports that Japanese learners of English can comprehend 79% of English words by reading, whilst only 26% of them can be recognized. As you can see, there is a huge gap between an auditory and visual information processing abilities for Japanese learners of English. Before introducing how to overcome this problem, the knowledge regarding cognitive psychology theory by Anderson might be helpful. As you can see, Anderson claims that language learning involves certain steps and proposes a cognitive framework of language comprehension based on perception, passing, and utilization. Although these three step phases are interrelated, recursive, and possibly concurrent, 
they differ from one another. At the lowest cognitive level of listening, perception is the decoding of acoustic input and it involves extracting phonemes from a continuous stream of speech. With regard to the first stage, Anderson argues that there are at least two problems in speech perception or recognition, segmentation and co-articulation. The first problem, segmentation, occurs when the phonemes need to be identified. But unlike printed text, speech is not broken into discrete units. Speech is a continuous stream of sounds with no noticeable word boundaries. Examples of segmentation problem include assimilation, contraction, deletion, elision, liaison, linking, and reduction. Thus, any learners of English normally experience this problem. The second problem in speech percep perception involves a phenomenon known as co-articulation, which is the overlapping of adjacent articulations. That is, as the vocal tract is producing one sound, it moves towards the shape of for the following phoneme. For example, the sound of B itself and B in bark are different. Thus, when pronouncing B in bark, the vocal tract is already moving towards the next sound, A. Ah. In addition, when pronouncing A ah in bark, the root of her tongue is raised to produce that G. These segmentation problems pose complications for any learners of English since an independent phenomenon of segmentation does not usually occur in a single sentence. Rather, multiple phenomena of segmentation might occur in just a single sentence. Moreover, these difficulties exist only in perception, the lowest cognitive level of listening. Anderson describes that speech perception poses information processing demands that are in many ways greater than what is involved in other types of auditory perception. Many Japanese learners of English encounter these segmentation problems. Ikemura indicates that the auditory recognition of words is one of the major problems at the speech perception level for Japanese learners of English. Ikemura reports that Japanese learners of English can recognize only 26% of the words, which they can do so 79% by reading. In other words, we can say that a vast majority of Japanese learners of English have a problem at perception level they need to become able to recognize words just by listening. Now, let's move on to the third step. The purpose of the third step is to, how to instruct the way to overcome the problem towards an imbalance between an auditory and visual information processing abilities. As a concrete procedure, instruct the learners to listen to the audio, including the words that the learners couldn't recognize by listening. Now, in this procedure, it's critical to instruct to look at the audio script paying extra attention to the words that the learners couldn't recognize by listening. The purpose of this procedure is to fix the imbalance between an auditory and visual information processing ability by combining both auditory and visual information. After repeating this procedure at least three times, next, instruct the learners 
to listen to the audio again this time without looking at absolutely nothing. The purpose of this procedure is to confirm that now the learners can recognize the information auditorily just by listening from that next time. Through these two concrete procedures, we, the teachers, are able to instruct how to overcome the deficiency at the perception level. By repeating these trainings, learners can increase the number of words that they can comprehend simply by listening and also have an extra capacity by paying less attention to perception. Here again, um, the knowledge regarding human information processing theory of Schneider and Schiffering might be helpful. As you can see, Schneider and Schiffering propose that le learning includes two types of cognitive processing controlled and automatic human information processing. Controlled processing involves a sequence of cognitive activities under active control, which draw the conscious attention of the subject. Conversely, automatic processing involves a sequence of cognitive activities that automatically occur without active control and generally without conscious attention. This theory can be well explained to the scenario of learning to drive a car. In this regard, initially, the entire learning process is controlled, thus requiring, requiring conscious attention to every action. However, after more experience, Certain parts of the process become relatively automatic and are performed subconsciously. Eventually, the entire process becomes automatic to the extent that under normal circumstances, one has the ability to drive a car well and without too much thought. Based on this theory, perception level or a dictation training in listening is categorized as controlled processing, since it involves phonemic decoding, which requires conscious attention to phonemes, the smallest segment of sound. In contrast, from a listening strategy perspective, the identification of individual words is mainly regarded as automatic processing, because it can only be possible after phonemic decoding occurs automatically without active control and conscious attention. Thus, the less automatic an activity becomes, the more time and cognitive energy it requires. In this regard, when learners take more time in phonemic decoding, their overall comprehension suffers. Based on these theories and evidence, learners would be able to have more capacity for upper levels such as parsing and utilization by repeating the dictation training as mentioned above. As mentioned above, Though the vast majority of Japanese learners of English encounter these problems at the perception level, there are cases which comprehension broke down at a parsing level. How to diagnose whether learner's comprehension broke down at this level is firstly, check whether the learners could understand the grammar construction of a key sentence which is vital to answer their questions. If not, the cause derives from a deficiency of grammatical knowledge. In case there is no problem in their grammar, then where and why comprehension broke down might be in a final stage, utilization. In this final stage, 
Listeners are required what the speaker means rather than what was said. In other words, an ability to read or listen between lines is critical. As a good example, why a listener failed to comprehend at this level is when I was a postgraduate student in England reading my DPhil at the University of Sussex, I was the last student to enter a classroom. When seated, the old British male lecturer looked at me and said, were you born in a barn? Thinking what a strange and abrupt question at the beginning of a lesson, I simply answered, no, I was born in Japan. He seemed to be upset, stood up and shut the door himself and looked at me once again. I, of course, haven't got the foggiest idea what he meant. In this case, as you can see, Comprehension broke down at a utilization level and the cause was the deficiency of background knowledge. Later, from my classmate, I became to know, I became to learn, were you born in a barn means shut the door. Now, in the medical field, it's common to treat and cure patients based on evidence. If the medical field had been conducted by simply individual doctors' personal experience, the medical field wouldn't have developed so much like today. In the same way, the fields of language instruction and language education should be conducted based on evidence more, uh, but not based on a personal experience of individual teachers in order to avoid going on the same circle endlessly. My main point in this presentation is very simple. Testing and teaching are two different things. Based on theories and evidence, we, the teachers, are capable to instruct precisely where and why comprehension broke down. And once we know that cause, we can also instruct how to overcome the problems. Again, thank you very much for choosing this presentation and having watched this video until the end. For further information and any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me at this email. Again, thank you very much. Bye for now.